So today we are going to look at solutions and suspensions. So what are solutions? Uh, solution is actually a mixture. A mixture that is formed uh, when you put uh, one or more solutes. Uh, so if you put one or more solutes into a solvent. Into a solvent. So what is a solute? Solute would be the one that dissolves uh, in the solvent. So the solvent is the substance that the solute uh, dissolves in. So let's take an example. If you have a beak of water and then you put salt inside. So the water will be the solvent and the salt that's going to dissolve in the water will be the solute. So then what are suspensions? So suspensions uh, is when the solid or liquid uh, are being suspended in a liquid or a gas and it doesn't uh, dissolve completely. So for example if you put uh, sand into water. So sand will not dissolve into the water so the, the sand will remain within the water and uh, eventually not uh, dissolve inside. So in that case this will be a suspension. So how can we tell when a solution is, uh, or when is, or when a mixture is a solution, and when is it a suspension? So there are a couple of criteria. Uh, first of all, you can actually see it. So we can know by the appearance of the mixture. So uh, solutions, they tend to be uh, clear, and the colors are uniform. Uh, it's clear. It's a clear solution, and the colors are uniform. So we also call this the uh, a homogeneous mixture. So this is term we use on uh, this clear water or clear mixture. And for a suspension, you tend to see that it's actually a suspension. You tend to see that it's actually cloudy, and the color is usually un ununiform. It's uh, it's uneven, so you have uneven color. So, and we call this uh, type of mixtures heterogeneous mixtures. So this is uh, the first way you can tell between a solution and a suspension. Uh, the other way you can see it is uh, using light. So if you shine a light across the uh, beaker of uh, of mixture, so if you shine a torch light, you shine it across. If you see the light uh, completely on the other side, that means the light passed through, then you know there is a solution because uh, there are no solutes uh, sort of blocking the light going through. Whereas if you have a suspension with a lot of particles inside, and you shine a, a light you will realize that the particles inside block the light. So the light that you get is either very little or uh, there's no light at all on the other side. So by shining a light, you can actually test whether it's a solution or it's a suspension. The, the last way is actually using a method of uh, filtering. So if you take a filter and put it inside a funnel or filter paper and you pour a solution inside, because the solutes are all dissolved within the solution, the entire solution will go past the filter paper and go into your beak. So you won't have any residue. So for solution, there is no residue. But if you put a suspension in, because the solvents are bigger than the, uh, the porous or the holes in the filter paper, only the liquid will go through the funnel while the, uh, the solutes will stay on the filter paper as residue. So for suspensions, there will be a residue. So now we are going to look at a concept called uh, solubility of the solution. So let's get rid of this. So what is uh, solubility? So if you add solutes into a solvent, it will come to a point where uh, even though it dissolves initially, uh, there won't be any, uh, uh, you'll come to a point where even if you add more solutes, you will not dissolve anymore. So that would be the uh, solubility of a, 
of a mixture. So we also call this the uh, point of saturation. That means uh, once it's saturated, uh, that means you cannot actually s dissolve any more of the solutes. So a quick example, say example we can uh, uh, put uh, 20, say 22 grams of uh, copper sulfate into water before it uh, doesn't dissolve anymore into 100 grams of water. So we can say that the uh, solubility of uh, copper sulfate in water is actually 22 grams per 100 gram of water. But one thing you have to note is that uh, there is a temperature for this figure because at higher temperatures the solubility may increase. So when you give your answer on solubility, you have to state also the deg the temperature that uh, this this uh, experiment is being done or the temperature where you get this result. There are a total of uh, three reasons why uh, that de determine the solubility of a solution. One we have mentioned is actually the temperature of the uh, of the mixture. Two is you have to depend on the nature of the solute and finally you also have to depend on the nature of the solvent so depending what the solvents are or depending what the solutes are you can expect uh, different uh, solubility to the mixture as well so right now we're gonna look at the uh, rate of dissolving so let's just rub this away this one as well Solubility looks at how much a solute can, uh, how much of solute can dissolve in the solvent, but uh, we want to also know how fast uh, this solute can dissolve in the solvent, and we call this the rate of the dissolving. The rate of dissolving. So what are the things that affect the rate of dissolving? One uh, is stirring. If we stir a solution uh, with the solutes inside the rate of dissolving increases. So why is this so? So imagine we have a beaker of solvent okay, and we have a lot of solutes and it's left to settle so the sol uh, if we don't stir it, the solutes will eventually sink and go down to the bottom. So you realize that uh, the part that's actually dissolving is the part where the solvent gets in contact with the solutes. So it's actually really the top layer if the water cannot go past in between the holes versus if you stir it, the solutes are actually spread around the solution. So you can realize that there's a lot more contact between the solvent and the solutes. So stirring actually increases the rate of uh, dissolving. The second factor is actually the surface area of the solute. So we can uh, look at it this way. So we have a beaker of solvent and we have a solute of this size. So what is actually being uh, dissolved is the contact between the solvent and the solute. So it's actually the outside of the solute. So you can see these all parts are actually sort of, uh, are, uh, uh, sort of dissolving. Whereas if you have four smaller pieces, with a to uh, it's the same size but it's broken into four smaller pieces. So imagine this, so it's actually spread into four pieces you realize that not only the outside which is the same space that is actually dissolving the contact with the solvent increases on the inside as well because right now these are touching the water, the solvent so you realize that because there's more contact with the solvent the rate of this uh, rate of uh, dissolving increases as well so the last criteria that actually helps with the dissolving is actually the temperature as well. So uh, a higher temperature increases the rate of dissolving and this is partly uh, due to what you saw just now where higher temperature increases the solubility so the saturation is actually reached slower because it's more soluble so the, dis uh, so the dissolving rate increases.